Hey, what's up guys, it's Brad, and I wanted to talk a little bit about amogging. <clears throat> a lot of guys get amogged in the club. Um, just, just so you know, I'm only 5'8", so I'm not a very big guy, and sometimes when I'm not super jacked, like I'm not right now, uh, I get guys coming up to me who think that they can, um, you know, do this. I, in other words, what amogging is, is, it's like an alpha male battle. It's basically a battle between you and another guy where you're showing dominance, social dominance. Not really physical dominance so much, although there certainly is an element of that implied in the interaction. What it is, is the battle for dominance for the girl. It, you know, basically a guy comes, like say you're talking to a girl, I'm talking to a girl right here, I'm like, yeah, yeah, very cool, yeah, so cool to meet you, da da. Then another guy comes in and he'll start trying to make me look uh, less high status than him. And the way that, you know, they, they do it in all types of ways. They might butt in on the conversation. They might try to make me look bad. They might try to make, you know, me look um, stupid in some way. Or, in some cases, the very best, most effective way to amog somebody is where they come in and they're actually pretty polite. And they are just cool. You know, they're maybe they're cool, they're good looking, and they're big. And, you know, that's the most effective way to amog somebody because uh, if you're socially calibrated and you come in, you know, say it's a set right here, they're talking, and I come in, I'm like, like, hey, you guys are a beautiful couple. I just want to tell you that. You guys look like, you know, you should be getting married or, or something like that. You guys are perfect for each other. How long have you guys been together? You guys look like you've been together for, like, years. And, uh, you know, by saying that, you know, that's polite. That's sort of feeding into his ego. But she is very, unless they're together, very often what she's going to say is she's going to say something like, oh, we're not together. Or if she likes him, she'll pretend and be like, oh, yeah, we're together. Ha, ha, ha. And he'll be like, oh, you know. But uh, by doing that, let's say it goes well, the AMOG goes well. She's like, oh, no, I don't like, you know, we're not together. I just, I just met this guy. His state's going to drop. And then all I do is just stay there and, and joke and be cool and be, you know, just kick some good game, you know? But I'm not uh, aggressively going at the guy to like be like, yeah, nice little buddy. Like, oh, look at your fucking shirt. I remember when I used to have a shirt like that in high school. Uh -huh. Looks good on you though. Shirt like that, you ought to get a free bowl of soup. You know, something like that, it was like Caddyshack line. <laughs> but, um, you know, th that's like a good way to amog somebody or make them look less than you so you could get the girl's attraction or the attention on you. But the thing is though, is that most guys when they amog, they come in and they're, they're very uncalibrated. They're very, they don't practice cold perch pickup. They come in and they'll do something like they'll rustle my hat or something or they'll play with my beard or something like that. And it all depends on your personal level of, you know, how you feel. Like if a big guy comes in and messes with my beard, you know, I might just be like, hey, don't fucking touch my face. All right, you touch my face again, you're gonna have a problem. Back the fuck up. And I'll do that. And because because that's you know that's like a personal boundary violation. That's the way that I deal with it. You know personally, if somebody touches me to put their hands on me, I'd be like, yeah. like first time was funny, second time you're gonna have a problem. So back the fuck up. Thank you. You know, and then uh, and then from there, if there's a problem, you know where the guy gets physical, you know he starts to like back up. I'll take the girl, I'll be like, hey, this guy's unsafe. Let's go. I'll be like, hey, bouncer, come here. Or, you know, uh, worst comes to worst, if you're outside or something like that, you should know how to fight in a situation like that. Ideally, you don't want to ever get into a fight. You don't want to escalate things. But uh, some guys, if they if they violate you, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to look like, you know, are you just going to let people lay their hands on you and push you around and stuff like that? Or are you going to stand up for yourself? I have a tendency to kind of stand up for myself. Uh, but a lot of guys, you know, it's, it's they may not know how to fight and stuff like that. And by the way, even if you know how to fight, there's fucking no guarantees that you're going to win that fight. There's no guarantees ever that you're going to win a fight. And even if you do win a fight, uh, there's a very good chance that you're going to get hit, you're going to get fucked up, you're going to get hurt, you're going to go to the hospital. If you hurt him, you can get sued. There's a lot of reasons why you don't want to fight, but ultimately the point of this video is just to make you more aware of what can go down. Uh, and a lot of guys are surprised. They're caught by surprise when, when other guys come into the set, or they're talking shit, and stuff like this. The best way to deal with this when a guy comes in is just be cooler than him, have better game. In other words, you fix the problem in the months before. 
So when the guy comes in a set, you know, instead of you being really, uh, you know, instead of uh, him looking cooler than you, you're gonna look a lot cooler than him because you've already been going out. You've been doing your sets, you've been doing your approaches, you've been getting laid, you've been getting numbers, you've been going through the process. Whereas he hasn't, he's probably just some guy that drank a bunch and he stumbled into your set. He's just like, hey, like, can I buy you a drink? Don't mess with this little guy with headphones. What's he doing with his fucking headphones? And then, uh, you know, he just looks stupid. You know, you could come back with a, a verbal remark at that point, like, be like, hey, nice penis. Be like, it looks, it looks huge. You look like you have the biggest dick. This guy has the biggest dick I've ever seen. You want to take it out for us? You want to show us how big it is? Look at it. Oh my God, it's like to the floor. Wow, so amazing. So amazing, so amazing. Anyway, let me back on her. So, so that, that comment right there would be kind of to take him off balance. Every guy feels like he's insecure about the size of his dick. Most guys feel very insecure about the size of their dick. If he actually pulls out his dick, that would be even better for you. Like even if he has like a huge dick, like wow, nice dick. Bouncer, this guy just pulled out his dick, you know, and uh, then you get him out of there. But um, there's ways to deal with it. More or less, the way you deal with AMOGs in the best possible way is just be cool, you know, just be cool, and um, you know, just see like this guy is gonna blow himself out. He's not as socially attuned as me. He's not as cool as me. I've been going. I've been doing these approaches. He's not as cool as me. Okay. Even if he looks bigger, cooler, tougher. These guys, most of these guys do, are not, if you practice, if you're a practitioner of pickup, you're a lot cooler than these guys. So you don't really have to worry about it so much because they're gonna blow themselves out anyway. They're gonna say something stupid. They're gonna do something creepy. They're gonna do something overly aggressive. It's gonna get them kicked the fuck out. And that's the bottom line. So anytime that that happens, I had a guy actually uh, try to amog me uh, in day game yesterday. This guy, he's another coach, uh, fucking, real weirdo man this guy uh, I'm not even gonna say his name he comes in and, and he starts he starts talking about how he wants to fuck me in the ass he's like oh did I tell you bro did I tell you he's like this I fucked this guy in the ass last week it's not gay because I fucked him and I'm like I was like at first I was glad to see you but this just got real weird real fast and I looked at the girl I'm like we're gonna go uh, have fun with your gay fantasy and uh, have a great day. Don't follow up. And that took the girl away. And that's and that's the way it is, you know. Uh, a lot of these guys are very weird. They've got a chip on their shoulder. They don't like to see like a, a dude that's not supposed to be talking to a really hot girl, getting attraction from a really hot girl. So you may experience this, but when you do, the cure for it is just to be cool and to follow some of the suggestions I've given you here. So with that said, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you want to see this in person, you know, join us on a boot camp. Join me and Jason on a boot camp, and you can see us actually perform this stuff in person. Again, I swear to God, we're going to do some some infield soon, so you can actually see me. You know, not that I get a mod that often, but it does happen. You know, if you go out to clubs enough, like I do, I go out almost every night. You're going to have times where you know guys come into your set and they, they you know they fuck with you or they just they just fuck with you while you're out. And it's really up to you to deal with it in an appropriate way that's going to keep the girl attracted to you. It's not going to, you know, you're not going to let him take the girl from you because that's the whole fucking point of why you're there. And ultimately allow you to keep your self-respect, you know. Because on one hand, you know, you want to just walk away. You don't want to escalate the situation at all because that's the worst possible situation you can get into is a fight. But also you want to keep your self-respect. And I find the best way to do that is, you know, honestly, know how to fight. If somebody, if somebody's fucking with you, know how to fight. You know, just know how to do it, just in case something pops off. I've had to use my fighting skills before, and it's, you know, it, without them, I would have been in deep shit. So I recommend every man, you know, be strong, fit, do cardio, do your running, do your swimming, do your boxing, do your your jujitsu, do your muay thai, do all that shit, learn tactics and all that. And then also, you know, uh, get really good at game. You know, I actually think the guys who stand the biggest chance of getting the fights have no fucking idea how to pick up women. Because, you know, when, you know, a guy comes into their set, they're very fucking threatened the guy's gonna take the girl. 
When a guy comes into my set, I'm not threatened that he's going to take my girl because I know my game is better than his. I know that I'm going to win this battle. <laughs> but what I don't like is when guys come in and they're very aggressive and, and they get like they put their hands on me and stuff. Certain people, when they put their hands on you, you know, it's up to you. But personally, I don't like it. You know, I don't let people put their hands on me. I don't let them touch my beard or my head or anything like that. People do that. I touch them right back. I say, get back the fuck up. Put your fucking hands on me again. This is not going to be a fucking open palm to your chest. It's going to be your fucking face. You know, and I'll let them know. Um, but that's up to you. You know, you got to be, you got to actually be able to, to follow through and actually, you know, make something happen if something has to go down. So don't just go, go ahead and do that. So anyway, with that said, thank you guys for tuning in. Talk to you guys soon. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. Peace.